Good evening, everyone. Here's the PM update for March 25th. Obviously, the biggest focus is going to be the pivot Russia is taking on operations in Ukraine. As the first deputy chief of Russia's general staff said, in general, the main tasks of the first stage of the operation have been completed. The combat potential of the armed forces of Ukraine has been significantly reduced, allowing us to focus on the main efforts on achieving the main goal, the liberation of Donbass. This is, they're using this argument so that they can pin forces in the West to carry out attacks in the east. They're probably going to continue to dig in around Kyiv to keep forces there to try and keep Ukraine from liberating Donbass and Crimea. The Russian military has claimed it's not targeting civilians or residential areas, despite the overwhelming evidence to the contrary. So this is obviously a movement of the goalposts. Putin originally stated that his, his goals were demilitarization of Ukraine and denazification of Ukraine. He wanted an overthrow of the Ukrainian government to install a pro-Russian regime, and in conversations with President Macron on March 3rd, Putin said he wants to take full control and neutralize the country to pull it back into the Russian fold vis-a-vis um, -vis the pre-1991 borders. None of those things have happened. And Putin and his completely unmitigated incompetence are just showing. I mean, he is a completely inept military leader and a moron tactically and strategically. So and I, I'm just... I'm sorry for my kind of forcefulness here, but he is, I'm sick and tired of this idiot child thinking that he is running the world and all he's got is nuclear weapons. So Radovsky's remarks comes as Russian advances appear to have stalled around major Ukrainian cities such as Kyiv and Kharkiv, and Russia continues to fail to achieve air superiority. Kyiv, for its part, remains firm that Russia must return Crimea and Donbass and likely is not moving from that position. Russia is unlikely to move from its position of demand of maximalist demands on Donbass and Crimea to keep those as well. This is going to lead to a protracted defensive war of attrition, and frankly, the Kremlin can't afford it. Um, the Kremlin also increased, increased its rhetoric against the West, saying that the West is now posing an existential threat, quote unquote. They're using that specific term because that's in their nuclear doctrine, and they're wanting to try and threaten the West. Because their military is so completely weak and pathetic that it would be steamrolled by the West. And thankfully, the West is not backing down. Russian forces are likely relocating Ukrainian citizens to establish control over occupied areas and gain political leverage using their military. That's because their pathetic military can't actually take the territory. Kremlin began implementing new laws within its own country to, against spreading fakes about the war in Ukraine and, and increasingly seeks to convince its own citizens that the war is good and any opposition to such is treason. However, there are isolated signs of dissent appearing amongst Russian and government officials. So that's where we're at today. Sorry I was a bit angry about it.